It's about that time again, about that time again, guys. Ten minutes now before noontime Eastern on a Thursday morning. Happy March to everybody. Now, remember, March, we talked about this yesterday in training. We talked about it briefly yesterday with the guests in the trade room here. March is considered by my standards to be one of the more challenging, well, not this time of the month, but the end of the month is going to be one of the more challenging months or challenging times of the year. In my theory, we got the tax season upon us. You've got the end of the first quarter. A lot of New Year's resolutions have now been broken, right? I, I swear I tried to lose that 50 pounds, right? <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. But you get a lot of new ideas, a lot of New Year's resolutions. A lot of people are exhausted after the first three months of the year. And so we do expect the end of this month to be a little bit of a challenge. Don't forget, you've also got quadruple witching the week of the 12th. It's actually an early quad witching this, this, this week, uh, this month as well. So we're only about 10 days away, 12, 13 days away from uh, quadruple witching here the first one of the year, which is also going to be a challenge. I'm going to talk more about how we trade quadruple witching later on uh, in the month. We'll come back and talk more about that. In the meantime, though, I want to remind everybody this morning to please be careful out there with their risk capital. Please take a second to read our disclaimer. Please be aware there is risk out there in these markets, guys. Not everyone is suitable for day trading, so please be careful with your risk capital. Speak to somebody you trust regarding your risk capital, guys. And don't be afraid to take it slowly. If you're a guest in this trade room right now, we haven't gone through training yet, use a demo account, all right? Don't be foolish and trade a live account without being properly trained. Be realistic with your expectations. And of course, as a member, I'm going to train you guys on every piece of information you need to know, how to properly manage your trades, manage your account, manage your emotions, manage your computer, right? Everything else uh, between now and then. So be careful out there, guys. Please take a minute, read the disclaimer, make sure you guys are aware of the risks associated with, with, uh, with trading, and let's get started. Once again, I got our content information there posted below for you if you guys have any questions for us. This morning, we had very important news coming out early, but we talked about this earlier. We were wondering if the jobless claims reports, we had, we, we've been hearing rumors that a lot of people had been leaving the job market. A lot of uh, job seekers had been losing their jobless, uh, their, their uh, uh, unemployment benefits. And remember, when you apply for unemployment benefits, it lasts 99 weeks. Okay, just about two years. So after two years, and you think back, 2012, yeah, 2010 was about, you know, that was about the end of the first bailout run. So right now, you're talking end of 2009, okay, that's when people went on, on their unemployment. Now, end of 2011, they're starting to fall off unemployment now, and now we're seeing those jobless claims tumble. We've had lots of news chatter this morning. Bernanke talked yesterday about it. He hit it again this morning about how they're not quite satisfied yet with the jobs coming into the market. Jobless claims don't talk anything about new jobs. They talk about unemployment benefits. So that was a big, a big issue this morning. We were wondering, even though we got that lower number on jobless claims, would it be discounted? Would traders kind of shrug it off thinking that it was a manipulated number of some sort? It wasn't really a true you know, view of the actual strength of the economy. And again, market did the exact same thing we thought. It kind of shrugged it off. Didn't give us much to work with this morning at nine at eight thirty. We quickly picked up on some difficult personality this morning. We quickly picked up on the idea the market personality was real sloppy. We saw a dollar clue. We'll talk about that in a moment. We made it through nine thirty, and we had the most important news of the morning since we had the jobless claims kind of you know I guess laughed at so to speak was the ISM manufacturing. ISM came in came in lower than expected. Construction spending came in flat. And then we had Bernanke this morning at 10 o'clock who really kind of put the markets in an analysis paralysis standpoint. It wasn't until after Bernanke started in his Q&A, it wasn't until after 10.30 NAT gas before we actually started getting some movement today. Now, we're very familiar with how to be a day trader. Being a day trader is all about getting into the market each morning, trying to get an idea of what the market is trying to tell us. What's the market personality? Are we trending? Are we sideways? Are we contained? Are we moving? Are we fast? Are we slow? Are we fake out breakouts? Or are we strength in breakouts? So this morning we picked up on that market personality real quickly and realized right away that the personality was telling us this might be one of those fake out breakout days. And that's exactly the topic that was kind of on our mind all morning. Now grab a look at the dollar. The dollar index really gave us a strong clue this morning this is our second clue. The first thing we saw today was we saw this 
we saw this market personality after the news came out at 8.30 that really was concerning. Then we grabbed the dollar. And you're going to see here this dollar really never got going today. We had a double top, and that double top gave us some significant support below us. We also knew that if you go way up top here, this is posted for you guys in the blog this morning, go way up top, you're going to find a trigger zone of resistance overhead. So we had 78.950 resistance. We then went one step further and we found out we had a A, B, C, and D. So we knew we had lots of support below and resistance overhead. And what do we know about the dollar and the previous high of day? It loves to stick on those previous highs and previous lows, doesn't it, guys? So we knew right away we may have that dollar sitting there for a while. It didn't quite sit on top of the previous high of day, but it definitely sat on the 78810 area, which, again, first clue was the news, right, or the lack of reaction to the news. The second clue here was a very narrow and contained dollar. You could definitely call this a price wedge if you wanted to. You could definitely call it a sideways dollar if you wanted to. The dollar personality was very range-bound, very contained. That was our second clue to fade the breakouts. So first clue was personality. Second clue was the dollar. Once we saw those two lining up, then we knew, all right, it's now time to look for those fake-out breakouts. We then grabbed the gold. Gold was actually very good to us today. We tend to have days on gold where nothing happens, and we have days where a lot of things happen. Today on gold had a great day. Now, this is a 55 wave on gold we're watching right now. Uh, we've got a couple members right now in the gold long right now with a target off at 26 and target of 32. But let me clean this off for a second here and show you guys what was happening here this morning. Now, again, this chart's posted for you guys on the blog in real time. If you go back to, the, uh, if you go back to your blog here, Okay, you'll see here what our plan of attack here was at 1030 on gold. Here was, nope, that's the crude. Let's go back and grab our gold here. Here was the chart we found on the gold. So here was the chart at 9 o'clock this morning that we saw on gold. And this morning on gold, there's your price wedge. 